Hey, I'm Hunt, and this is Hunt on LSU, your channel for LSU Fighting Tiger football talk. Enjoy the video. We want you to leave a comment below, hit that like button, and subscribe right below the video. Enjoy. Glenn, did you win big on the blackjack table or what? I'm I'm a couple hundred dollars richer, Hunt. Oh, yeah, I, baby. I had a pretty pretty good 30 minutes at the blackjack table and got up before it all went away. That is just exceptional work by you. They're going to have to tear the strip down after that performance. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, the football wasn't quite as good. LSU comes up on the short end. Uh, what was the environment like in the uh, in the stadium? It was pretty electric, I must say. I mean, we we got there about a couple hours before the game, and you just walking across the kind of the stadium there, it was it was a lot of purple. It was a lot of gold. Um, you know, the reports kind of before the game was that Mandalay Bay had run out of uh, multiple alcoholic beverages yep. uh, in, in their hotel. So a lot of those fans were making their way over to the stadium and were ready to have a good time. And and I thought for, you know, for really the first half, it was a very entertaining game. The first three quarters, I mean, really, I mean, down to the end, it was a very entertaining game just watching from a, you know, a bird's eye view. But uh, certainly a lot of, uh, a lot of costly mistakes there in the second half from LSU, uh, kind of self-inflicted wounds throughout the entirety of the game. Uh, and here we are sitting uh, talking about another team, another you know game one loss. Brian Kelly talked today. Uh, Shea asked him about uh, his decision to take the football and start games. What's your opinion on that? Yeah, I, I would certainly you know want to defer in those situations. I mean, I, I, I understand Kelly's answer there. He, you know, he wants to be aggressive. He wants to set the tone early. Um, but you know, if you're, if you're in a situation where you're down, uh, in, in, in the second half and you, you get a chance to have the ball first, I, I think that's just a very invaluable tool to have, you know, to kind of start the set the tone of the second half. Cause I mean, a lot of these games are won in the second half. I think LSU is going to be in a lot of tight games this year. So I would love to have that extra possession in the second half. Um, as far as go for it, going for it on fourth down, um, fourth and three was probably a little long for me. I mean, I, I think um, they they were moving the ball well. They were getting, you know, Nussmeyer was making some really nice quick reads. Um, but as we saw when the game, when the field shortened throughout the entire game, the offense really struggled to put the ball uh, in the end zone. And that uh, obviously started on that first drive by not being able to to kind of you know convert there on that fourth and three. I went through uh, all of Nussmeyer's passing uh, for a story, and then I talked about it on the show today, and a lot of it was done around the line of scrimmage. How did you feel yeah. about LSU's game plan from a passing perspective? There's a common narrative and talking point that they needed to, to throw it down the field a little bit more. What did you think? Yeah, it was pretty conservative. I, I think I was a little surprised they didn't take you know a couple more shots down the field, but I also think it's kind of where you miss Chris Hilton in this game. Uh, I think you miss him a lot, and Kyle Parker was a guy that I think had shown that ability uh, in fall camp to go deep, and he goes down on the first drive. Um, I'm a little surprised. Uh, I'm not. I wouldn't say surprised, but I, I would say the one guy that I thought LSU might scheme up on those kinds of plays would be C.J. Daniels, and he really didn't get a whole lot of opportunities downfield to kind of make some big plays happen for LSU. But um, I, I overall, look, they were moving the ball extremely well in between the 20s. Like they did a really nice job on most of their drives, just kind of moving the offense and staying ahead of the chains. It really came down to. Uh, when they got inside the 20, that they just were not able to have the kind of success that you need to win a tight game like that. So you know, as far as game plan goes, I don't have a problem with them being more conservative. I thought it was really good to kind of ease Nuss into that game and kind of, you know, it's a second start as a quarterback. So uh, easing him in with those short, quick reads and, you know, continuing to move the chains, not get, you know, put in precarious situations, um, I thought was was a really smart move. And uh, unfortunately, when they got down inside the 20, they just were not able to have the same kind of success. Brian Kelly was asked about the running game today. What did you think of uh, of his answer and, and of LSU's running on Sunday night? Yeah, they just they were not very good. Um, and I think we talked about it last week. You know, it was my biggest key to the game was you know having you know a, a, a balanced offense and, and the offensive line showing that they can you know push a team around a little bit in the run game and. Unfortunately, it went the other way for LSU, I think, in a lot of those situations. I mean, that that third and one in particular, when you had a chance to really kind of put your put your put your uh, throat on the on the on the on a, on USC, they really just were not able to do that. And they got stuffed on that third and one. I thought that was a really uh, big time breaking point in the in the fourth quarter there when they didn't convert that. Um, and, and, you know, I think it was just indicative of kind of a run 
you know, game plan overall that was very inside heavy. I mean, we'd heard all season, all off season about how they were implementing more outside zone stuff. And I thought the most creative run they had on the entire evening was Xavion Thomas. You know, they put in motion and they put him in the backfield on the play. They get it to him on the outside and he's, you know, sprints up field for seven, eight yards and uh, was, was a good kind of, you know, chain mover I, I would love to see some more creativity in the run game that's what Brian Kelly kind of talked about today you know their efficiency was not very good uh especially on those you know third and short third and you know medium routes where they were just trying to get you know a couple of yards but um yeah they, they have a lot of work to do in that respect because you know you need to have some balance there and I don't think that they were able to really establish that in, in this first game Glenn West, our guest from Go247. You can read all your LSU team coverage there as well as your recruiting coverage. He's with us every Tuesday here on the Hunt Palmer Show. Defensively, uh, big picture, what'd you think? I thought it was progress. You know, it was it was not great at times, but it also uh, they they got off the field. I mean, like they they did a nice job. I thought on third down. I think USC was three of nine on third downs, and and you know I can't remember how many times last year the defense held a team to around thirty three percent on third down conversions. It probably happened maybe once or twice, but uh, you know I I thought that was a really positive step. I thought. I'm glad that I'm glad the media wasn't totally bogus on the Savion Jones thing. I thought he had a really yeah. really nice game, and uh, I, I think he's in store for a really big year. Uh, he's he's done a really nice job uh, so far, and I think he can really set the tone there uh, on, on the D line. Cornerback, I thought Ashton Stamps you know, had a really nice night, and I thought you know that the one thing that Kelly said today, which I do agree with, is that those safeties have to step up a little bit more. I thought that they they had a rough night, whether it was Jordan Gilbert or uh, you know, a couple of other guys that, that, that were back there. But, um, you yeah, know, they, they've got some work to do defensively. But I thought overall, you know, they, they held on as long as they could. And I thought the one answer that Brian Kelly gave that was probably the most honest on Sunday uh, was that they put the defense in a position that they really just were not ready for in terms of being able to actually uh, win a game and when when the points are low. And so that's, you know, that's going to be the next step here is is trying to get, you know, these players ready to to kind of win games that are that are tighter. Um, but uh, I thought for for the most part, they held up well. They got some good pressure and, and, and made some plays, which they didn't do a whole lot of last year. What can they accomplish against Nichols on Saturday? I think they, they just got to go beat up on somebody. They got to, they got to, they got to find, they got to find some things. They, I think they need to play a little bit more free. They need to just, just really kind of hone in on, you know, some players and what they want to do. I think honestly, what they should do is, is get a lot of these younger pieces involved. You know, Kelly talked a lot about, um, you know, some of the veterans that were making some mistakes and you know, some costly penalties there. I would love to see what Deshaun Spears looks like at safety. I'd love to see more PJ Woodland at, at, at corner. I'd, Love to see um, some of these young, um, you know, interior linemen, uh, in, like Dominic McKinley, maybe a little bit of Ahmad Bro, uh, get some opportunity to play against Nichols, um, and and see just kind of what happens. You know, wide receiver. The the big answer today from Kelly was, you know, we want to get Shelton Sampson more involved. Uh, would love to see that because that's a big six four six five receiver that has a ton of potential uh, and showed some flashes in fall camp, but just really hasn't been able to stay you know healthy. I think for for a lot of the camp, so we'll we'll get a chance to see him a little bit more, especially if Chris Hilton can't go. Um, so just just an opportunity to see, I think, the depth of this roster and maybe if you know things you know go well, you know, opportunity leads to more opportunity. Maybe if some of these guys play well, they'll get some more extended looks as the season wears along. How do you feel about this team now moving forward uh, with the schedule that's in front of them? Do you still think this is a ten and two, nine and three type team, or has your, has your uh, mind changed? It's going to be tough to get to ten and two. I mean, I, I, I kind of my preseason prediction was nine and three. I still think that's very much in play. Um, but you know, you've there's a lot of work to do. I mean, they, they just they, they did not. The, the the rhythm wasn't always there in the second half offensively. Um, you know they they certainly struggled. I think at times in the secondary they gave up some big explosive plays. Uh, that 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 element to the game still has not gone away. I think they're going to have to try to really hone in on some of the explosive plays that they've allowed in the secondary and kind of look at kind of what they can do to kind of help uh, you know mitigate some of those. But uh, I would say this is still a team. It's probably in that you know, three, four loss range. I, I don't see 10 and two at this point, but it's also week one and you're coming off a very disappointing loss. So you're probably a little bit jaded. You're probably a little nearsighted in terms of what this team can be. I think this team has better days ahead and they'll be much better in, uh, in October, November, but what that looks like, I think it's kind of hard to predict right now with, uh, with how week one turned out. 
You can read his stuff at Go247. You can follow him on Twitter as well. He's with us every single Tuesday on the Jim's Farms Hotline. He is Glenn West. Glenn, thanks for the time, man. All right. Thanks, Hunt. Hey, thanks for watching Hunt on LSU. Before you get out of here, do us a couple of favors. Hit that like button, leave your comments below, and subscribe to the channel for all your fighting Tiger football talk. See you next time.